Hey, how we doing, everybody? Welcome to Barn Burner on a Thursday. Boomer and Pinder in the Tower Chrysler Studios on location today. And uh, and the Redster at the kitchen table. Looking bright, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to roll. How we doing? No school this week. The Redster's been sleeping in. Oh, it's wonderful. Nice. Yeah. Oh, so, so, so what time do you crawl out? Today? Today oh, I got oh. off the couch at about 9.02. Yeah. Wow. But That's pretty schools, good. Yeah. Usually school, the alarm goes off at 6.20. Yeah, that's uh, that's an extra three hours, I think, Rhett. Yeah. Just that, mm-hmm. that feels good, I think. It's, yeah, it it's does. All, it's all. I actually told the shoveler today. I said I will not be getting up to go to school anymore. I feel too good. So, yeah. Well, there you go. So an update there. Yeah, for... sleep's good, buddy. Yeah. Sleep's good. Hey, we're in the Tower Chrysler Studios on location. Tower Chrysler. Now I bring this up because it is brutally cold right now. Retro. We're about minus twenty eight. Do we? With the. the in my truck on the way minus 28 with pure sun uh, so uh, it was brutal overnight continues to be brutal and tower chrysler they're constantly giving back surge and nikki unbelievable people from now to the end of the month which is starting to creep up on us isn't it teaming up with tower collecting warm clothing for the mustard seed you can drop off winter clothes winter items coats boots mitts gloves at the dealership they are going to jam a ram in the showroom and then take it directly to the mustard seed at the end of the month and if you do drop off some stuff draw a drum put your name in we'll have a nice prize for you at the end of the month they will so you know them awesome for uh, everybody over at tower chrysler the uh, calgary's favorite tower chrysler dealer in uh, in town there's no other Tower Chrysler that people like more it's than Tower Chrysler. the best I've come across yeah. by a mile. We are here on location today at the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. And already, the uh, the chat uh, is wondering, uh, did Pinder leave last night? Did you? Because we didn't come. We came separately. Did you no, spend the I, night yeah, here? I left. Yeah. No, I uh, I could have stayed. Yeah. There, I, there was a moment where I was like, you know... But I think you probably you do fine till two or three. Then what do you do till six a.m.? You're better off sleeping at home, no? Well, you, it's, you lose track of time in a casino, right? It it's is like, true. Oh my gosh, I yeah, can't believe geez, it's, so much fun. Uh, it's four a.m. And somebody was asking if uh, maybe a little bit slow getting the show going today. We're on location, people. It's, you know, there's some things. That, wondering if they had to pull me off of the slots. Uh, no, I actually have not touched the slots. Buffet though. A bit of a trap. They do have a buffet. It's a phenomenal buffet. So if there's a place Dino could get trapped around yeah. breakfast time. Eh. Do you like the I've slots crushed, retro? I've crushed that buffet myself. At the, yeah, the I a bet. few times. They're still talking about it here. <laughs> yeah, it's your like, picture's on the wall. They retired your jersey in there. It's on the wall. <laughs> I'm not uh, a big slot. I, I tend to play at the tables. I like, I like right. the interaction. You know, I'm a social guy, boom. Slot. Yeah. Slots right there. My buddy Beef mm-hmm. loves the slots. Yeah. Yeah. You play that uh, jacks are better. Not not the slots, but I mean the jack he called it playing the piano. Because you get on there. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and he he'd do it so fast, you're watching it's like what you hold what'd you even hold there? Did you keep the queen? Did what you, are you doing? I used to try to win I used to try to win like eight bucks in junior playing jacks are better to pay for my my meals. Put in a this five and hopefully get it to ten. Then I could yeah. afford lunch. <laughs> it's a big, big Western League paychecks every month. One hundred and eighty-two oh. bucks. What is it? Yeah. That was a Dude. big thing, eh? When the when the vaults hit the bars. At least it wasn't man. I don't know what the, what the Alberta deal was. was different. They kind of yeah. gone the other way. They were there forever. It feels like the BLTs, and then they sort of faded out. It's hard to find them now. Was it the same in Sask Retro? Did they come in huge? I don't even yep. know. Early early nineties kind of thing. I remember. They came into, uh, it was one of the lockouts, so what, 94, 95? What year would that have been? Yeah, 95, 96, somewhere there. And Pat Falloon was putting on quite a show at Houston's and Brandon. It was, so you had the pianos, right? The VL, couple VLTs going. Yep, and it was just, it was just whiskey, whiskey and waters. Really? Just <laughs> covering the top it's of the Just bolts. a veteran showing yeah. the kids how it's done. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I this is what, this what Daryl likes, you know. Yeah. You don't bring up a kid and not put him next to a guy that's got some jewelry that knows his way around. That's right. You need your Trevor Lewis's and your Milan Lucci's to show kids how to drink heavily and play two VLTs at the same time while they're underage. Now, it's again, important. hey, responsible. Be responsible, everybody. 
we are at the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. We, uh, well, coming up this weekend, it, uh, it's the triple header over at the event center. Headpins, Lee Aaron, and Toronto, a female-led Canadian classic triple header. And tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.ca. That's how you get it. All tickets through Ticketmaster.ca. The website, check out that and more. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino.ca. Let's get to it. We were very excited last night, Retro. A rare victory on Afterburner oh, for the boys. Wow. Uh, was kind of wondering at 3-1 to one what, what the fuck we were going to have to do to get a victory. But the, the Flames dug in, and luckily for all of us, they got a win last night. Uh, just, I guess your thoughts in general, the, the start, it was very much like Philadelphia, right? Yeah. It, they, they ended up, they weren't trailing one to nothing, but were badly outplaying and outshooting the opponent, but Only yet couldn't one. either get a lead or, or distance themselves. What were your vibes until, or I My guess, up to 3-1? My vibes were not good. I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> when it got to 3-1, I'm like, okay, well, this is just the season. Clearly, there's going yeah. to be one of that team that it's just like even if they, they've had bad luck, they've had bad play, and now when they play well, they still can't win. This is just one of those seasons where you know, things aren't going to go your way, and then, uh, yeah. then all of a sudden, <laughs> things started to turn. So I mean, they had a great effort. They, they, they should kick them. So I want you to like we can look at you know, quantitative, like, oh, here's the zone entries and here was the scoring chances. I want you to remove all that nonsense and tell me the mindset of the players, if they lose that game playing that well, playing in Vegas today, arriving before they left with the time zone change in Vegas last night versus that win where they score five unanswered, rally from down 3-1, because we could talk about X's and O's and line mates and all that, but these are humans, and I just think it's night and day where they'd be mentally if they'd lost that one versus where they are now. And I think that would have been a tough one to swallow last night when you do put up that many shots and do outplay a team. And if you'd walked away in a loss situation, again, you're getting on the plane. And I don't even think I don't even think the coaches would be hard on you at that point. They could see in their watch of the games too. But you're you would have had the mental thoughts that I had. You would have been going, It's it, we're not gonna get out of it. What was that movie? The perfect storm? Yeah where they're going up and down in that storm and they see the sun and they think they're going to get there and then all of a sudden things get 10 times worse and they're like it's not going to let we're not going to get out of it we're just you would have had the mindset where Jeez. even in our best you know, even in our best efforts and in quality games we're not getting points this is not going to go well yeah you, you'd feel like the hockey gods were out to get you you get 50 100. plus shots they they had three three on eight shots and one is put into your own net by your defenseman. Truly, if if you lost that one last night, you'd say fuck it. Uh, totally. And, and the third one is to fully ripping one off the crossbar. Your D man blows a tire and it's a two on one. It's like holy fuck, these yeah. guys. It's it's like the deck stacked against you. No, even when you're doing things right, it's ending up in your own. Net. And we talked about it last night. That I mean, if you want to be critical. So I'm getting awfully giddy for a win in February over the Arizona Coyotes. But, I mean, it's two things. Arizona's been playing pretty good, and right now, the Flames, it doesn't matter what the opponent is. We've seen that. You need wins. You had, what, 13 guys getting points last night. That's a feel-good game. You need that. Kids. Yeah, the kids get on board as well. How about... How about... Walking It's our boy. And love and Walker Deer over here. I'm telling you, I I hope Daryl's coming around on this stuff because I those think kids he is. are right. I do too. I think he's seeing. Uh, wait a minute. I've put a lot of faith in these old pricks. Maybe it's time for these <laughs> young guns to let them go. Let the well, kids run. Uh, like Daryl's stubborn, but he's not dumb. And I think yes. you, you can't help but notice the added pace on both the second line when Pelche got there and now the fourth line with Dewar back in there. I think you'd be foolish to go away from it unless there's some sort of a, like, geez, we really need more X, Y, or Z. But I'm sorry. I think Dewar can do everything Brett Ritchie can do at a quicker pace. And he's got some scoring touch. And if you like Lewis for killing penalties, so be it. And if you feel like Luch is a leader and it gives you a bit of that, you know, nuclear deterrent, fair you don't need to have Ruzichka in there but I, I just feel like you can't take Dewar out right now 
No, oh, Jimmy. not the way he yeah. played the <laughs> last night. No way. Yeah, but it's much like, and I mean, bigger than next game. I mean, yeah, I feel like he's earned a good run here with that type of a performance that really I'm, helped hinge that game back. My prediction is favorite. that Walker Doer is going to be a fan favorite for the next five years. I want to make shirts right now. I got ideas. Yeah, I was thinking about <laughs> ideas on the way home last night. Durr, durr. The, Save them. The Don't thing, be, see people. Steal yeah, I know. Them. The thing with, with, with that guy is he's never looked out of place. No, you can look a step slow, or you're just kind of you're not. A, from the time he stepped in, and it's a fourth line role, so yep. I get that. But he he deserves to be there, and and I'm with you. You now have Pelche, who seems to look more and more at home and more comfortable every single game. I like the way he was moving on the power play yesterday. He looked very comfortable. Yep. Gets a goal off of his – did we say it's off his It was pass? a stick. I'm not sure. Read anyway. the quotes, man. He tipped who, that with a stick. But who cares? It's not how, it's how many. That line has been good. Those two guys have stepped in. Now, I don't know that – you're going to see Zary and Wolf and a whole cast of guys coming in. Phillips But back. at least, man, how long you wanted Pelche to be here. Yeah. And all you could say was just don't – you got to do something. You got to do something to warrant being here and to justify being here. And I think he's done that and more. I think he's helping that line. And they're, they're just getting better, he individually. And that line is – kind of getting better as well hearing him post game he said look when you you just want to get up here but now that you're here like you, you look around you see where you are in the standings we need goals like being here and being on this line is one thing but i need to produce to help this team win and he's a very responsible defensive player he doesn't turn the puck over much i worry much more about that with codry and hubido on the line than i do with him and he, he's a mature kid and i'll tell you what we've been calling for this kid for over a year now and he has arrived much more polished than he would have been if you called him up a year ago. And so it might be frustrating that they're a little more of a slow cooker, but look at the player you got. It's a more refined player. He's a really sharp defensive player. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. It's all good. It's all good. Kids getting in. No, you're more needed, more kids. I don't, I don't, let's get, let's yeah. get yeah. more kids. More. Yeah. More. Like I, I get, and I even, I mean, it's ridiculous. It'll never happen, but. You talk about Lewis and Lucic, and I'm uh, sure you can say, that's fine, play him if you think you need him. Send him to the moon. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would yeah. rather at this point watch kids come in and give you the energy and the effort. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, don't I still mean think that rudely, but. Rizicka is an interesting puzzle piece for me. I don't know what's best. I, I would like to see him next to Rizicka and then pick your Lewis, Lucic, whatever on the one side. Um, but yeah, like I think Brett Ritchie's now expendable. I, I just like very quickly in the year, Kevin Rooney was expendable. Or as we talked about last night, what it what it does to for you at least to a certain extent, you don't need to go and get a Ryan Carpenter for right. a fifth. Or, yep. You don't need to do that. You shouldn't be hunting Never for a depth forward. Yeah, right. Yeah, the, the Rooney one is. I mean, gosh, still don't know what uh, what exactly they were seeing there, but. It, I, I don't know if it's the same on the blue line. I, I've liked Gilbert, liked him again last night. I think he's, you know, he's he's a little bit quicker and more agile than I maybe thought he was going to be. I still think you could add some some guys on the back end, but between yep. what Pelche is showing you and continues to grow, and now you've brought Dewar in, you've got a couple of extra bodies. Don't spend any assets. I'm, Not know, a forward I, unless you're bringing in. Something else that Professor makes something that makes Meyer. yeah something someone that you term, can't fit in with well, your cap know. anyway, yeah, right? Like, know. sorry, you added a significant player with term. I, like, I, you're gonna have to show me the Rubik's cube for the summer because they're just they're already capped. So anyway, was not looking forward to doing a Flames lose Oof. in Arizona despite putting up 50 shots last night. So luckily we didn't have to do that. Now and so now they go to a place they love going. Yeah. Keep the good times rolling. Hey? Eh? Yeah, look at there's uh, afterburner last night, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Telling you, Dino. You guys did great. You look like you're playing the event center in a couple of weeks playing bass. How we doing, buddies? <laughs> hey. It's great to be back at the Griegel. It's been a long time since I've played in front of a sold out crowd here at the Griegel. Uh we're going to do Ask Rhett coming up later on in the show. The uh, the to. injury report from McLeod Law is coming up. We'll do the Pinder report. We've got a whole bunch of things to do here. Um, but I wanted to say uh, T's and P's to our buddy Greg Keller up at Bonton Meats. Uh-oh. What's going on? Well, he was out. Uh, is he back? He from was on vacation. He was in Cabo. 
watching Super Bowl. I think we showed uh, a couple weeks ago his Super Bowl setup and how he's going to be watching and had his family down there. He's got his granddaughter. Great times. Uh, Greg came back yesterday or the day before. I'm trying to remember when I was texting him and uh, had no long pants. Oh, because remember, it's quite nice here right around Super Bowl time. Yeah, it was yeah, quite balmy, yeah. very nice. You could get away with that. Minus 30, whatever it was, as he hopped off the plane in his short pants. So if there's frostbite on uh, on Greg's uh, cankles, if he's a little bit agitated when you swing by Bonton, uh, you'll, you'll understand. Yeah, frostbitten kneecaps. That's yeah, not ideal. That's around. like the guy in Winnipeg, remember? Until, uh, oh, yeah. until the Bombers won the Gray Cup, he wasn't cool going to wear guy, pants. Yeah. It was like 15 years. Yeah, cool guy. <laughs> But with the weather, uh, I was just thinking about today's Thursday. Okay, so I've, it's going to warm up a little bit. But this is this is stew weather here, retro. I'm, I'm, oh, what yeah. what co- what meat dish am I going to be making today? We're going to leave the uh, the casino here, and then get ready for afterburner in the game tonight. What hearty meal in minus thirty am I going to make? Is it going to be a stew? Is it going to be a roast? But I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking Bonton might be the way to go here today. Uh, oddly enough, boom, boom, I just had to go buy a $120 roast at the oh. local butcher shop here. So 120 Yankee? I am, yeah, 120 Yankee, yeah, for three, three boys and a, and a shoveler to eat. So we had a bit of an ice storm last night, so it's the same kind of weather here so i am i'm roasting a tenderloin and uh gonna make some mashed i've got a lovely au jus to go with Mm, mm, mm. it's gonna be good Mm, very nice bonton meat market opened the doors in 1921 all they've done since is provide the highest quality product and treat customers like family it's triple a alberta beef free-range poultry grain-fed alberta lamb milk-fed veal fresh alberta pork they are uh, every year their Calgary Consumer Choice Award winner for best deli meat market. Twenty eight Crowfoot Circle Northwest Bonton Meat Market dot com. Put it in your uh, your Google thing there. Put it in your maps. Get up Google there thing. Go. and uh, and get you some and say hi to Greg, who's probably got some sort of salve on his on his knees and his ankles. Very delicate. Very delicate. So what do we know about the Vegas Golden Knights? They lead the division. Chandler Stevenson leads them in points. That has been. I mean, of all the additions, trades, acquisitions, that's a sneaky under the radar one that has been huge for Vegas. He was our top line center most of last year. And now he's playing further down the lineup, but continuing to produce. He plays with pace. Deemed expendable, I guess, in Washington because it wasn't a huge price that got him in there. So a yeah, couple guys been... from Washington have done well with, you think, what Nate Schmidt and what he meant to that organization the first three years. Um, yeah. In fact, I was looking at it today. There's six guys that remain from the expansion draft or trades made around the expansion draft. You'll see a few on there. Uh, half their top two lines. So Marcia so Carlson and Riley Smith, the duo from Florida. Thank you, Dale Talon. Hope you enjoyed protecting Alex Petrovic. And then, yeah, Carlson was what a 12 goal guy in Columbus and then explodes for 40 year one. Other guys. See, see retro. He's still so quick. Brad McNabb. So quick. Dale Talon, expansion draft, Dale like Petrovic under the bus. It's just well, it's an amazing you mix skill. in the mix in the the Spencer Knight, Sergey Bobrovsky within ten days of each other. Like it's magic. Dale Talon does things no one else can do. Uh, McNabb, Carrier, and Riley Smith. So there you go, my buddy Riley Smith. Where does he play? Well, he's leading them in goals. GTHL beauty. Yeah, Come on. GTHL beauty. Uh, Nineteen goals for Riley Smith leads the way. And I, I think I was saying this yesterday, they, they continue to be a very good team despite you, you look and you want because they're goaltender. Yep. For, for starters, Logan, Steve, Logan Thompson, pardon me, this is the, you're going to be your number one. See, number one material, comes in, plays very well. I guess he's fine. Mark Stone gets back in. He's your captain. He's the straw that stirs the drink. Mm-hmm. He's out. Back, gonna, is he going to need surgery? I know you try and avoid back surgery as, at all costs, but, man, it his, his back has let him down for a few years now. So I don't know, and they, they still sit atop the division. So it's, it's not as though they're doing it under the radar anymore, but I do wonder a little bit, given all of that, yeah. like 19 goals, 48 points, that's your team. They, they don't have a – I was going to say they don't have a – 
superstar. It's not superstar performance right now for Jack Eichel. He's right. been good. When Stone's not he's there, he hasn't been the same. When he's playing with Stone, he's been phenomenal this year. But, I mean, that's, again, more about Stone than anyone else. I, I just like their blue line. I think that's what's kept them alive. You go Petrangelo, Martinez, McNabb, Theodore, and then White Clouds on your third pair. Like, that's, that's yeah. a good blue line, and that's probably, you know, work hard physical bottom six forwards and a good blue line. And they've got more saves than we thought they would with a guy that was third string on the depth chart last year in Logan Thompson. Haven't won in Vegas, right? Haven't won. Seven games there, Muti. I, I realize that, but it's... I'm wor- I think the Flames have played well lately, and I like their energy, so I'm a little more optimistic, but that's a tough trip to go into Vegas, having never won and played last night in <laughs> in phoenix yeah it's uh it's something we'll we'll have we've got a little factoid coming up in the pin report it's not just that they haven't won it's um it's been incredibly lopsided in that building and the flames have actually done well against vegas at the dome when you look at the aggregate but uh, they ain't there tonight i would say what are our th- of- go ahead what are our ahead. thoughts on go jack ahead. eichel right now uh, it's I mean, what, be you, his you, first full season. Let's see. Yeah. yeah I mean, you're I, saying I think well, he's he hasn't fallen been from as superstar good. to star. Yeah, you ha- he hasn't been a good with as good without Stone, and it's like, well, if you're supposed to be a top five centerman in the league, you probably don't or shouldn't be relying right. on other people to help you out. And to be fair, I don't think he's that anymore. So, and yeah. he—it's not as though he stinks or anything. He's no. got 18 goals, 40 points in 44 games. But boom, when the boom. when the Flames were in that boom. mix, we. That, that we talked stinks. about him as a superstar. I, I'm, yes, I'm not disagreeing that, with you. We we had him as one of the top two centermen in the league, and those are not numbers. That's that Elias Lindholm type numbers. That's a very good yeah, player. It's not a superstar. Player. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's look, it's his first full there. season back. I, I don't think anyone will care when he points up in the he puts up in the regular season if he's their best player in the playoffs. But to this point. Um, you know, he's not the best player on the ice as much as his line mate Stone was. When they're two well, the, the, the problem is that, sure, you could have the injuries and all that stuff, and he didn't like it in Buffalo, but has he had, he's only basically had one year where he really went out and dominated for a full season. And I, is, wow, he's not what he thought we thought he was. I guess it's becoming clear. Like, not yet. Yeah. If, yeah, but what do you mean, not yet? Well, I mean, how much hockey has he played the last three years? He hasn't had a single full season. So, like, he's not a superstar. I'm with you. He's looking like a good player, not a great player. But it's it's that tool kit that – it's all those skills. He, he hasn't lost them. Like, would you be surprised if he had a 90-point season next year? I'd be like – Fuck, you're optimistic maybe a little, but not about a lot. things that you, – you're the guy that hates to play the – imaginary game but you use imaginary whenever you need it he's horse like 10 and i'm a asking half, if you'd you be surprised up. if he had 90 points would you or no uh, well right now i'll be surprised yeah yeah because he's like he's How basically point per game. Done it? Eight, i think to your point once so i mean i i don't think i think he'll have another year that's close to his best year but again i'm with you i don't think he's a superstar in this league it's one of those ones where you felt like Buffalo did okay. Their backs were up against the wall. And obviously you love how it's gone for Buffalo. But it's it, it just felt like one of those deals that, how about Vegas? Man, they had another weapon. Now, again, they're first in the division. But I, I don't feel like it has been the explosion or has, made, has no. taken them to that next level. Like maybe you would think adding a number one center would do. Because he hasn't performed as a number. Them leading the division is a function of it being the softest division in hockey. I mean, Mm. there's no contender in this division in my mind. I mean, Edmonton can't defend. Seattle's on a huge swoon the last month. Vegas is hurt and not that dominant with who in net. Uh, And and Calgary's massively underachieved at this point. LA's kind of been where you thought they'd be, and that's 2-3 in the division, and they're not a – they're not a – ooh, look at this – massive power i mean none of these teams lead any other division in hockey and they're sort of taking turns doing it now seattle and vegas if we were in vegas if we had kind of got our shit together and we had (laughs) why don't we go to arizona watch the game there never seen that rink that'd be awesome then fly into vegas short flight be there the next day and then come home if we'd have had our uh 
our act figured out, what would we be doing right now in Vegas? Sleeping. The show. Yeah, I guess we'd be doing the show. The show. <laughs> yeah. Sleep after the show, right? Okay. Stay out all night, do the show, go to bed. Wake up for the game tonight. Well, I'm some of us ve- do that, Vegas Ryan, withdrawals. but other people stay out all night and then neglect the show. So there's, I, I mean, that's I get what, what I said. Yeah. yeah. Stay up all night, do the show, go to bed. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, show up late for the show. Go leave, to, lose go your to, fucking bank or, card. Or not go, at to, all. go to the Go to the pepper mill at three. <laughs> if you are on YouTube right now, you can see it right there, and I want to bring some attention to it. St. Eugene Golf. Oh, there it went. Oh, yeah. St. Eugene Golf Resort and Casino was uh, was the banner. There we are. We're we'll back. New partner. Welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to Barn Burner. Yeah, yep. we're in at Christmas, go. Dino, helping us raise funds for closer to home. St. Eugene came in, yeah, with the uh, the kind of the, the package that they put yeah. together for uh, for one lucky bidder. The money went to our Christmas campaign to support uh, uh, the, the uh, whatever, closer to home, the Christmas uh, Christmas campaign that we had going. But you see it there, Championship Golf Course, out by Cranbrook, British Columbia. And we talked to Mike. Mike says, yeah, let's do some stuff. We'll, we want to get on board. We're loving the barn burner. People are talking about right. it. Let's go. St. Eugene.ca is the website. There is the phone number on your screen. And I have a feeling we've got a new golf friend. Ah, retro. We maybe have a golf event partner in St. Eugene. Could you get back to Canada, Red, at some point and golf with us? Would you like How that? How close is that to the border? Can we smuggle you across in like a grain truck or something? A big human puts on a golf, uh, a boys trip out near Kimberly Cranbrook. And I think they... I Almost every year, I play at Saint Eugene. I played perfect. Saint Eugene had to be. I was still playing in Florida. Jeez, what year would that have been? Anyway, before two thousand, it's a long time ago. So I don't want to, you know, without letting get, getting ahead of ourselves. I would anticipate we're going to have a uh, early season potential barn burner invitational kind of a it's the BBI. type of uh, spring type of deal maybe i would just get out there and uh, oh it's just really it's a nice place there's a hotel and a casino and a golf course and uh well what do you know Weird after the nice flames sweep vegas in round one yeah they'll yeah. have that downtime we'll go golf for a week get content and then come back for round two yeah that'll be tough they'll have so much time off there between that's you worry about is it rest is it rust yeah you always have that battle always that battle thank you saint eugene good to have you on board we're going to do our best to treat you right championship golf course cranbrook british columbia it is also one of those things if you uh if you're looking uh, maybe you uh, you and your significant other want a little getaway it's very nice tranquil is could what we, i'll call it it's a tranquil can, can we do it during sam Steele days like sam Steele plays though, for man. the minnesota wilds or is that right yeah mm. sure yeah who is the is other? Who's the? Uh, I'm sure, it was a Sam. Steele. I don't think it's Sam Steele. He was from I think it is. Um, might be a different guy. Uh, who's the other? Sam thing? Steele days, Cranbrook, BC. Ha! You guys, you, you got to get us. out of your house. June fifteenth to eighteenth. So what do we do? Great uh, smuggle you in. Yeah. How do we celebrate? You won't that? Have to. I'm almost. Right. I've almost oh, got my really? name cleared. All right. All right. How about that. <laughs> The gonorrhea. Uh, uh, You're asking about a flame. The flame uh, draft pick that was from Cranbrook. Played for Abbotsford. The big human? No, oh. it wasn't the big human. God damn it. Uh, Roman Horak was. Oh, no, okay. fuck sakes. Moving on. I it was Chilliwack. Great story, um, I know. Well, it, he probably called his games. I don't know why he wouldn't. Uh, I can think of guys that weren't drafted. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. I'm right there. It's so close. Do we want to just sit and wait? Ryan House. No, it's not a chill No, nope, Blonde hair, right. dark hair. What number? What type of player are we talking? Played junior, college kid? Uh, junior. Oh, you're thinking of Carter Banks. Carter Banks. Kimberly, BC. Kimberly just up the road. Loves oh, the Banks. big human. In the, at the, uh, the Kimberly rink. One section for the big human, one section for Carter Banks. Banksy. Wow. Great I, I hopes for Banks. Love he Banks. was full. You know what he was full of? Piss and vinegar. Leader. He fight. He gave up weight, reach, height, all the time in scraps yeah. when a team needed a fight. Leftbridge Hurricane. Yep. Yeah. Good Hurricane. Settle down, Leftbridge. 
said a lot more. Richie. Kimberly. Say it, you And occasionally, caddies for our boy Jared Dutois gets on the bag. How about that? Love it. My name is Eugene. Let's do the injury report on the tail end of our uh, tremendous game preparation for this matchup well, tonight good. between the uh, Flames and the Golden Knights. There you see it. McLeod Law, the injury report. They uh, Of the things that they specialize in, Peter Klein, personal injury. They're going to help take some stress off of your shoulders. You get injured. That's bad enough. Then you got to deal with all the you know, potential. Don't treat me like that. a jerk. You want someone on your side. McLeod-Lot.com. Call Peter Klein. Follow them on social media at McLeod Law LLC. Let's do the P, uh, the injury report. All right. So Vegas missing some bodies, right? We talked about Stone, done for the regular season. Uh, he gone. Robin Leonard, done for the season. That's a hip issue. That's one of three goalies on the shelf right now. Aiden Hill, day-to-day. -day. Uh, Logan Thompson, lower body, week-to-week. -week. That leaves them in, in the, uh, the unusual spot of uh, Laurent Brassois and Michael Hutchins. Michael, uh, yeah, your favorite guy. Backing up yeah. for the club right now. Hutchins Nolan Patrick, done for the season as well. That's an upper body injury from the fall. It's uh, it's a lot of hurt dudes, Rhett. It's, it's been a tough go for them on the injury front the last few years. Bunch of hurt bags. What are you going to do? And you you talk about the defense, and I was going to chirp. Was, uh, how are you winning games? With... Maybe not the best uh, spot to be chirping other teams' goaltending. Aiden Hill, a 2.55 goals against, a 9-10 save percentage, Take a win-loss record of 14-5-1. and one. Doing okay. Take that and run. Yeah. No doubt. And again, I, I like that blue line they've got. Uh, also, some other injury news while we're on the topic. Ryan Johansson, 12 weeks. He's getting shut down. Ooh. That's not good news for Nashville. I mean, they're kind of, you know, they're behind Calgary, which puts them on the lower end of the bubble. This might seal it for them. Maybe we see the Preds move into a sell position at the deadline. There'd be some interest in Tanner Janot, who they're trying to get an extension done with, but clearly haven't yet because it's not done. And then also, there's always interest in Matias Ekholm. So, with uh, the Johansson injury happening, he shut down for a while and looks like the season that might push Nashville into a different spot than they, they'd hoped to be come March 3rd. So that's, uh, and for the Flames, obviously the only absentee right now would be Oliver Shillington, personal reasons, still in Sweden. And I'm sure the team would have clarity at this point, Dean, whether he'll be back or not. I'm also sure the Flames wouldn't tell people if they were getting involved in the trade market. He wasn't coming back. It's only going to hurt your position. Yeah, it'll be uh, that cone. Cone? Cone of silence? Do you get inside a cone of silence? I just think about the things that pets wear. Is cone? it a code of silence, or, or you, do you get inside a cone of silence? Either way, they're not saying shit. Yeah. It's a presentation hush, of the hush. Cloud Law. <laughs> Call Peter Klein, 403-254-30. Oh, get that number, blind man. <laughs> oh, damn it. Numbers. Oh, Dino. Oh, Needs his goggles. What's Can't see your goggles. Where's your goggles? Okay, phone number 403-254-3864. There it is on your screen, 254-3864. That's a little better I can see there. P. Klein. P with – and then S Klein with a C. Klein with a C. PC line at <laughs> mcleod-law.com. There you go. Uh, Want to do the pinner report? Let's do it. Let's All crank right. it up. Pinner report is a presentation. A village haunt. Northwest Auto Mall, your dealership for life. They have the CRV hybrid. They have the Honda Passport Trail Sport. They've got the Ridge Line. The new Accord might be there now. People are excited. I said it yesterday. You can test drive a vehicle in the summertime. Say, oh, it handles really nice. It's uh, I really like the you think? very little road noise. Test drive one today. The worst conditions possible. That's going to tell you what you're getting in for it i uh i have a feeling that honda is gonna treat you right it's, uh, honda, it's the pinder report yeah let's let's start where we did last night it was uh maybe not the greatest of starts although it kind of was in the desert except at one point look what the graphic was on the broadcast from last night flames at coyotes this is one of the toughest looks we've seen in a season full of tough looks on the shot clock <laughs> 31 to 8 the shots Midway through the second, 3-1 Coyotes. I mean, this had pain written all over it at one point. Now, so this is at 31 shots. Shot 32 goes in for the Flames. Shot 33 goes in for the Flames. 
It was a comeback win. They'd score five in a row, and we talked about it on Afterburner. This was nearly the flamesiest Flames game of the 2022-2023 season. Can't lose this one, right? Yeah. I touch 50 Can shots. I be honest? Can I be honest? You, you turned it, was, it off and you thought it, they lost. It was 3-1, <laughs> and my, my eyes closed. I'm like, oh, boy. I'm going. <laughs> we didn't. Here's a taste of Afterburner last night. And, yeah. and you had said it. This is the most – Flamesy. Calgary flamesy game of 22, possible, 23. Where, because what were the shots after the first period? Uh, I see 16, 18 to 3. 18 to 3. Through 20. Scoring chances were 14 to 5. High dangers, 5 to 2. Like, it's so of the three to, shots, two yeah. of them. Which is very flamesy. <laughs> out yeah. shooting the crap out of your opponent, very flamesy. And yet only a one goal lead, very flamesy. And then sure enough, the first mistake they make penalty wise, it's in the back of that. You're tied in a game where. It feels like you needed a second puck for the Yotes to feel it on their stick at all. It was, it was a lopsided effort if you did anything of some look at the score. Yeah. So it was peak panic on Flames Twitter for a moment there in the second period. You noted it. Tanev throws one on his own net. Toffoli rips one off the bar. A, a D-man, I believe it was Rasmus Anderson, blows yeah. a tire and a two-on-one. And you're like, they're just not going to get any breaks. Well, it turns out they did. The, the rest of the way, it was all flames and that sets up i guess well tyler Toffoli doing it again we gotta start giving some love to this guy guy's been good i wonder if he's one of those guys Rhett. we talked about it last night veteran guys who's gonna say to daryl hey just hey hey we got this would it be a guy like tyler Toffoli? he's got some jewelry with daryl has known him a long time does he have that level of respect i bet he does well, he should be one of those guys for sure. He's dealt with them before. He knows what it takes. So and he's producing. So he's got, he, it's, you know, it's, there was one point in the year where they're sitting Lucic. So it made it tough on Lucic to want to go in and, and call out a coach or tell him to you chill think, out. So, you don't no, think Ruzichka's but, rolling in there and saying, hey, big D, <laughs> fucking cool. Rosie can get his head out of his hoop and start playing hockey. That would be nice for Rosie to do because he's going to get run out of the league here real soon. I don't care how long his stick is. You can't do shit from the press box. He's he's. Uh, I know, but no, he's in the he's press box for a reason. Right. I'm he's with you 100%. in the press box again, for a reason. You better impress some people. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, okay, so here's the standings after last night's. Oh, well. damn boy, damn, damn it, tough for me, damn it, tough for me, damn, damn it, tough for me, damn boy, damn, damn it, tough for me, damn it, tough for me. It's a fucking banger. Yeah, watch your mouth. It's that is a banger. You know what? Fuck that. You say whatever you want. That's a banger. Foley's been unreal this year. I just, whatever you do, Alex, what, don't, take don't play easy. that again. Don't play that one again. Don't, especially uh, after Foley scores tonight, don't I'd, play that on tomorrow's show. I'd hate it if you played that. Don't so you dare do that. Uh, standings. Here we are after last night. Boy, that feels good. Damn, boy, it feels good when you pick up a win against a team we thought would be right in the mix for Connor Bedard. Um, hey, small baby steps, right? Now they're only Love two it. back with Minnesota holding one game in hand. <sighs> yeah, there's still some work to be done, right? We talked about it on Afterburner last night. They've got two points so far. There's six available on the road. Not yet, but are No. Uh, how many points do you need on this road trip, Rhett, to make this a success? They've got two. Four remain. They're in Vegas tonight to lead the division. They're in Colorado on Saturday, defending Stanley Cup champs, albeit digged. Uh, dinged up. Two points. And how would you feel with three? You'd feel really Not damn one. good. I'm with you. Two salvages. Two. To Watch it. Is it to us there? Jeez. Okay. Here's That's the uh, story trouble. tonight, or last night, I guess. Flames arrive in Vegas. They land earlier than when they took off. The magic brought to us by Ryan Pike and Time Zones. And the bottom paragraph there, between an early arrival, short trip, and a light night in net for Dan Vladar facing just 14 shots. Would you dare do it, Rhett? Back-to-back Vladars on the road. I would, but I don't know why I would. Oops. <laughs> no, I guess he couldn't stop the Tanev shot. That was a nice one. It was he right in the end. Three killer. goals on. Yeah. He still gave up three on. Eight at one point, and yeah, three and fourteen. I don't much better. Yeah. Usually, Vladar is so good at taking away the bottom half of the net. Yeah, it's I mean, weird. He, he had it's like he didn't even know him sleeping. He was shooting on that play. Yeah, odd. Fuck, dude, he's right there. 
And it's not just. I don't okay. care. I don't care who plays that. Just stop the effing puck, please. Just please. Just seconded. Okay, so now let's incorporate the final game of the road trip in Denver on Saturday. Who do you want to net for that game, and does it affect tonight's start? I don't effing care who's in net. Yeah, just stop the puck, care. please. Yeah. Please. If one of these guys just wants to stop the puck, they can play the rest of the season. Go, like that, go, go get it. Go ahead. I'm willing to cheer for you. Just <laughs> stop the puck. Can you make the D men look kid. good? Stop the fucking make puck. the D men look good for a while. Come on, Christ! That's the analysis. How are these guys going to get contracts get. with shitty goaltending? Why aren't they thinking of the D? Hey, come on. That's great goalie analysis for Phenomenal. Byron Burner. Yeah. Who, who would you go? I don't care. I don't Just stop care. the puck. It's yeah. been rough in Vegas. How rough? Well, they're zero and seven in the building. But get this. They've had a lead for what? How, how like so seven games? You probably have some here and there. Ryan Pike has the data. They've led for two minutes and nine seconds in those seven hours of hockey on that sheet of ice in Vegas. That's abhorrent. That's, you know what it is? That's shitty hosts. Try and make a guest feel like they uh, are at home. No good. Two minutes and nine seconds. Uh, let's go to the AHL Flames. We already showed you the Vegas injury situation from a cloud loss, so we'll skip right ahead to the Wranglers in action. They were at the Dome with the Flames on the road. And Alex Gallant, check out this little Tilly at center ice. He was uh, not enthused. He was shooting the old Dukes, do you know? I'm cleaning it up for you. That's for you to listen to. Is this round two for Alex Gallant? Two fights tonight. <laughs> There's Sandra Prasina. My girl Sandra. So we got a little, we're sizing each other up for a bet here, Retro. This is the Alex Galant, the Silver Knights, Vegas's affiliate. Five eleven. In the beginning, he never says oh. no. Ooh, lands one there. Oh. And oh. there's another. Yeah. Jeez. I do believe Alex Gallant has done that to Mr. Marino uh, previously in this career. <laughs> Laces out, Dan. <laughs> 2019, I was in. Iowa, I think it was Marino and Gallant. Oof, he drilled him. And you know what else happened that night? The guy Tell got us. like that's that fight. Do they have uh concussion spotters? Because again, I think it was Marino, I could be wrong, but whoever he was fighting in Iowa, Iowa a few years ago, he absolutely cold cocked him, knocked him silly, and he kept playing. And I'm like, mm, take a look at that. Just, just uh, make them pass the test at least. Five four, they fall in overtime. They give, uh, they get one point. Give two oh, to Henderson shit. in the uh, AHL Battle oh, yeah. of oh, Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Calgary. Remember that. Uh, okay, yeah. Connor Bedard, Rhett, a little bit overblown. Uh, that was the quote yesterday. So now that yeah. you said that, we're gonna drill you over the head with a tack hammer well, every I mean, day with it, more Bedard. It's for stats. him to decide. Hey, hey look. We report, you decide. Rhett. You present the data. So here's some more data on Connor Bedard. 50 games this year between the Western League and the juniors. 61 goals in 50 games. 73 assists in 50 games. And this might be the most impressive one for me. 325 shots. That's six and a half shots a game. Six and a half. Good so Lord, man. Pass the puck. Oh, Listen, overblown. Right? I, I'm not- I'm buddies with his ex head coach David Struish, and I mean Strudel told me he he's not a two way player. He's, Don't he's played one end of the buddy. ice. Patty Kane would be just fine in anyone's I, roster, right? I gotta like, teach him geez. to play. I gotta teach him to play oh, both geez. ends of the all the ends of the ice. I all over the ice. I can't. He can't be just a one way player. Connor, Connor Bedard, Strudel. two one a one dimensional player signed David yeah. Struish. Thanks, Rat. Strudel. Rat just burying another. Jeez. <laughs> Now, I well, know don't be a dumbass. How about that? As a rookie. There's that option. I know, I know you're flirting with breaking Gretzky's record here, Connor, but if you could just play a little D, don't worry about the points. Just backtrack a little yeah. more on. Yeah, come on. We need, yeah. if you're, you're F3. You got to hustle back. Come on now. You know what? How excited truly is one team going to be? Well, here are the teams. My Let's God. get the graphic right now because this is a projected finish of the standings. So Anaheim now has taken over pole position. The Hawks are blowing this, Dino. They're on a bit of a heater here. Columbus still right in the mix. Montreal, man, you got Slavkoski. Who even needs a Bedard? Yikes. 
And the Coyotes have played themselves into a really small number here as well. They might have been the clubhouse's favorite at the beginning of the season to be in the Bedard Soup Stakes. I just don't know how I feel about any of those teams. Chicago's the only one that works for me. Central time. How far how far out are the Flames? Like if Buffalo's close, the Flames. They're probably on pace for ninety plus points. So five from there. I mean They're not gonna get ninety though. Yeah, they might. I, the problem isn't how far they're out in points. It's how many teams they have to pass. <laughs> if you want to take yeah, the analogy we use in the regular right. standings and flip it upside down, you could be real bad, but a there's a lot of teams that are going to be yeah. bad in there. So that's uh, that's a look at your Is Bedard there any, uh, any party that says, how about Vancouver? Yeah. The kid I, would love to play for the Canucks, right? Yeah, it's his favorite team. He's a North Van, North Shore Winter Club guy. Like That'd be a dream come true for him. I think it's probably a little bit shitty for the league in the sense that you don't want your next superstar playing in Pacific time, but I mean, it's a lottery. Well, do you want the cap to go up? I know about 32 GMs that care care about the cap cap. going up. It's cold outside. That's what I care about. Cares about the price of diesel. I got you. Um, Check this out. Speaking of Vancouver, Gino Ojek, we we mentioned his uh, passing. The Canucks going to do a great job. There's your practice jerseys. We've seen the league going crazy with them, which I think is awesome. More personality in the game, always good. These are tributes to Gino Ojik and designed by Jay, his cousin, an Algonquin artist. And uh, if we could zoom in, these are looking pretty slick. It kind of looks like the skate, but it's got a thunderbolt and some feathers on it. Uh, I like those colors. I just wish they'd start doing real jerseys, not just prackies with these things. But it is the NHL. There's Baby very steps, few. Baby. Look at that. That looks nice. There's very few swings and misses with these. I know. Like you're getting these warm up jerseys that they're doing there's no more like walmart pajamas remember when the the flames did the walmart pajamas like that was a huge swing miss you don't see that anymore good work very nice to tie in both obviously with gino ogic uh beloved out there yeah awesome uh we mentioned the ryan johansson injury in the mcleod law injury report so we will switch gears yeah there's 12 weeks right leg yeah not ideal I'd uh, text him, but I think he does. He doesn't call wrong him. number. The he changed his number. I think. You know, I, I feel bad when we miss anniversaries, Rhett. I mean, have you ever missed your anniversary with the shovel, or how do you feel about that? Like, are you I got, pretty good at remembering? If I miss one, I can do the other. I got two, so I'm good. I'm usually you got oh, two. Catch See, one that's a good them. setup. Yeah. Good yeah. backup plan. Um, mine is really close to uh, the kid's birthday. That always keeps me dialed in. We missed a big one yesterday, and that's on me because I'm the guy that compiled the pen. Wrote, one day late, let's all have a chortle together, as yesterday was the three-year anniversary of the Leafs Zamboni driver beating them in net. Hey, way to go. Hey, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, nothing bad came out of this, except his wife's on Twitter all the time no, now, just thinking that he's still in the league. Like, no, no, no. He was a Zamboni driver. This – He's not in the PA, honey. Wow. And then everybody knew what e-bug was. Yeah, What's e-bug. an e-bug? e-bug. 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 Yeah. If it had happened against, uh, you know, Anaheim on a Tuesday, we wouldn't have heard the story. But, it, you know, Leafs. So. Now, that said, I, I mean, we don't, we don't like that one because it's the Leafs or whatever. I don't know. You like all there of was something, There was something that it was just too much because there's so much coverage. That kid in Edmonton that went in. Yeah, that was great. That was awesome. U of a. It's happened in Vancouver. Chris Levesque and uh, Jordan White, two guys that went in. Uh, Cron was too drunk and couldn't yeah, do that right. one time. He was splayed out on the ground for the Flames. But, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're cool stories. This one just was, I don't know. It was like rammed down our throat too much. No bueno. Finally, guys, you're going to love this, Rhett. And, Dean, I think you'll appreciate it too. John Crook of the Phillies. Remember? Oh, that, Yeah. Yeah. He's got Big one fella. Nut. So he, uh, sorry, what was that? He's got one nut. Not sure that comes up here, but he's going to give us a tour of the Phillies room, which um, I just, it screams boom and rut. Lost in the training room. See now these weights and everything. This is the modern player. These weren't here when I was here because we didn't lift weights. We lifted pitchers of beer. I can tell you where everyone sat. It was like a ritual every night. This was my seat right here. And actually, when I would walk in after the game, there'd be two pitchers of beer here, a pack of cigarettes, and, and an ashtray right here. Of course, with the health of the players now, none of them do that stuff. Lenny would sit back here in the corner with about 50 towels bunched up around him and eating watermelon and spitting the seeds all over the floor, but he would use the towels there to spit his tobacco juice in. There, the, the, there was a training table right there. Darren Dalton sat there. 
All he had on was his sliding shorts, no shirt because, you know, he had that great body and everyone was jealous. Mitch always came in here and sat and told us how great he pitched, so we knew that was a lie. Dalton and Hollins and Dykstra used to come back here after games, every, like, like every, other, every other home game, and they would come in here and lift weights and, you know, and, and, and I would sit here with, with a beer and an ashtray and, and, and can't understand why they were grunting and sweating and, and like trying to build their bodies up. When we just had to play again the next day, I thought, you know, rest would be better. But this is where we all sat, and we stayed here till you know, 2, 3, 4 in the morning talking baseball. This is the play. This is the burial ground. We all got buried in this room, and it was the greatest. This is the greatest place. This is where our team came together. This room is the, the greatest room ever. So there's Rhett. Good in the room. That awesome. feels like your kind of guy. Isn't that awesome? It used to, it, it's so true, too. Like, I used to, they had a hot tub in the training room here in Buffalo, and you used to come in, take your gear off, because then the stupid media would come in, boom, and ask stupid questions. Uh, so you'd get out of the yeah. dressing room as quickly as possible. You sure as hell weren't going to go into the gym. So into the hot tub, and Pete Satelli, our trainer, he'd have a couple cold ones sitting there waiting for you. Here you go, big boy, just lounging. Arms up. Yeah. It'd be pretty fun being a pro athlete, wouldn't it, Dean? Boy, I'll tell you what. And so many of those names, I think people obviously it'll ring because they played the Blue Jays. Well, serious. But Lenny Dykstra, I mean, that guy, oh. a despicable human. I, I, and I can only imagine how many people have incredible Lenny Dykstra stories. Because, uh, of course, he's eating watermelon and spitting seeds on the ground and spitting his chew on the like just an on animal the, on the towels just an animal Darren dalton there's some names there mitch oh, williams yeah. the wild thing yeah i yeah. like it that's good stuff i could deal with some more but you know these kids now that you can't have ashtrays and yeah. smokes in the, in the, the room, players you know, health today with it's this uh, player's <laughs> health now you know delicate flowers. Yeah. kids today damn and decent <laughs> exposure <laughs> son of a damn it yeah. oh. <laughs> That's it, fellas. There's a little trip down memory lane for you, Rhett, somehow, way on the Pinder Report. There you go. Uh, hey, Village Honda, they want to buy your car. Need those used cars on the lot? You can sell them yours and get paid in 24 hours. No hassle. Get your no obligation. Appraisal done today. Up at the Northwest Auto Mall, villagehonda.com. Go and see them. They are your dealership for life. Uh, it's a bright light behind you, dummy. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. Are I they thought playing I was playing uh, TV on us here. The hell's going sure on? What was going down? Can Nobody's you put the camera down just to touch me? Thought I was getting called. Is it the popo? Thought it was my time. Um, <laughs> what time is our the game tonight? Ask Rhett now. Yeah, Let's I know. What time's Tonight's contest Seven is indeed an eight o'clock start. Son of a bitch. Uh, eight o'clock. That's uh, ten Sabers time, Brett. You know what? Part of the problem with all this late start. How do you stay up till ten o'clock to watch the game and not snack? I feel like you got to have popcorn going or something, Brett. Hey. Right? Uh, last yeah, night it was tacos, up with your nachos. Diet. It's, it's killing seven. me. I can't eat late at night. No good. I'm seeing seven. Seven Mountain or seven uh, Pacific? You two brainiacs. All right, seven, sure. Either, Either way. Well, which is uh, it? I I'll believe. find it right now. Settle down. I'm going People with probably want to know um, the truth. Like That one is one you guys should be able to figure out. Right I before we... Yeah, before we sign off on Seven today's program, my apologies. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to clean it up. Sorry. This asshole can't get the game time right. And, hey, I can't do Afterburner tonight because my wife, uh, my wife, uh, my darn wife, gosh, my wife. <sighs> it's going to be a rough wife one left tonight. town last week, had to take a couple days then. This, yeah, I get it, man. What are you I doing do it tonight? from my car, driving. I do, you know, the commitment I have, I put my life at risk to it's unparalleled stuff. It's the commitment. I wish you had Rhett's, Rhett's level commitment. commitment. Thank you, Dean. What are you going to? Uh, are going? We are going to Vance Joy, who she particularly enjoys, with another couple. couple and um, Vance Strippers? Joy. The, the, the second time I'll see Vance Is Joy it, in uh, Calgary. Chippendales? Chippendale dance? No, it's uh, sappy guitar vocals. Um, 
I'd rather go with like Tan Man to go see the Far Side or some hip hop group oh, or something. Tan Man, he's got some. Un- he's got some. He's an eclectic tastes retro. He's a Tan Man, hip hop head. Is he, he is a hip hop. He's a whacked out hippie. <laughs> so I get to see Vance Joy again with my wife. Yeah. You know, they say the second time you see a guy. Is he an Aussie prick? This Vance Joy. Of course, Joy? he's an Aussie prick. Oh, he's good looking God. Aussie. She's get our to get boy. What's it, Aussie Brad? Get go. ask Aussie yeah, Brad if this guy's Aussie worth Brad. watching. Go, right, so I've seen it already. Yeah. It's, it's not worth it for me, but uh, keep punching. Just take your girls. Go rush backstage. Have you ever I heard of saying this. no, Pinder? Like I tell the shoveler no to like she does. You got to. I felt like you had this established in your life. You haven't got it established, and now you're. You know too what it deep. is. You've said the yes too often, and now you got to do shit you don't want to do. The more no's I give out, the more no's I get. And I'm not in a position to be saying no to anything if I'm going to get no's thrown at me. I've got uh, a healthy amount of rope. I don't want that shortened. I would have. I don't get any no's, and my no's don't even have to be muttered. They're not, I'm not requested of. There's a bit of a difference in the power dynamic, I'd suggest, but in your relationship than mine. Is there even kind of a, like a, kind of a testing out phase by the shoveler? Is it kind of a... Do you think this may, maybe and then she's listening for grunts or certain noises that you would make to try and see where yeah, you're at? I would expect she has her own, yes, subterfuge uh, and way of figuring out whether this is an subterfuge. approachable topic. Feels like a perfect segue, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it's time for Ask Rat to presentation of Hope Street Property Management. Save your time. Let Hope Street go to work for you. Manage tenants. Find premium rental rates for you. You rest easy knowing that your property is safe and protected. You can book a virtual meeting online. Let Hope Street get to work for you. Canada's Property Manager of the Year. Locations Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary. Hopestreet.ca let's get into it. We've invited people to, uh, to email in the email address, ask red at flamesnation.ca. I'm going to bring this closer. I can't see shit. I don't even have You're access so blind. to this. I don't even have access to this email account. I don't think it's fair. If, we had a, a screenshot of Afterburner last night and someone said, Hey, Pinder brought his grandpa. I thought, Oh, that's just mean. Cause you didn't have your shades on oh, your glasses. Um, now if you had the email, would you open it? No, he wouldn't have it on his phone. Not on my, the not on my phone. No oh, chance to get in there. <laughs> I actually thought of a segment today about emails because you get 800 million emails, right? Yeah. And I, I, we should actually go once a month. We should have an email segment where you pick your best three of the month and go, look at this. Ugh. Like, what kind of moron do I have to be? to fill out this request for bank info to get my refund. Like just takes one. It's one Dale Talon and that guy's made his money. That's all you need. The amazing penis enlargement email that has made, you know, we got to have that. Fill out that form too. Pills, enhancement, women, dating. Oh yeah. Let's go. (laughs) So what are you guys saying? Those aren't, those aren't legit emails. Those are, this one's coming from uh, coming in hot sleeping. from Saskatchewan, from Sask, yep. all the way from Sask. Where about it's from Mark? Saskia. It is from uh, Elfros, the oh. the the location Everything. of your yak farm. Oh wow! Oh. Retro's yak farm, Good. chiming in today. Retsky, my fiance thinks it's ridiculous to have three types of pierogies at our wedding buffet. I was going to suggest a fourth dessert pierogi as well, but then got blindsided by the crazy, crazy, oh, I can't believe you saying this. Jesus. The crazy broads ideas of what should be served at a wedding. Should I narrow it down to just two varieties, cheddar cheese and sauerkraut, or just leave her all together? <laughs> I had to put my foot down already, insisting we serve prime rib. Now this I don't know what to do. Thanks in advance. That's Mark from Retro's Yak Farm out in Sass. It's a high pressure time, Rhett. Mark, it's just what I talked about with Pinder. You stick to your damn guns, Mark. You just tell her the way it is. There's going to be prime rib and there's going to be three types of pierogi. I'm not a big uh, uh, dessert pierogi kind of person. I'm not a big dessert guy to begin with. Give her, Give up on the dessert pierogies. It's three pierogies. It's prime rib. And tell her, stay in your lane, honey. Stay in your lane. 
you pick the dress, you get all the fancy, the, the flowers, the table stuff, flowers. You got to have the gifts and the bullshit. Pick the song stick for the dances. The, yes. Know your role. No, stick in your lane. You do you. I'll do me. Prime rib pierogies and a midnight lunch. Right, Mark? We're going to have a midnight lunch. You're going to have a full cut. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. God, a midnight lunch. Yeah. Didn't have poutine Blocks at that cheese, producer? Cut up in the cube, some pepperoni. You got to. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that or part you know of what? Mark. Yeah. No, wait. I came up with something even better. I came up with something better. What is that noise? Um, oh, there's someone's. Someone's winning big. Winning That's a lot of coins. Uh, Too much draft beer Teller, last night. Tell her fine. We'll only have two types of pierogies, but your midnight lunch is sausage and pierogies. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm dying right the now. The third serving is sausage. How good would that be? Boom. Sausage and pierogies oh. at midnight. Thank you. Unbelievable. That's, that's what it would be. You need to sop up the booze. That's the perfect thing to throw. Yes. Oh, back home. There was this family. They do the catering and their prime rib. I don't know what I don't know what they do to it, but it's one of those things. They don't tell people yeah. because it's like that's kind Sorry. of our business. It's what we do. The prime rib is unbelievable. And then they wheel out more sausage and more prime rib at the, for the midnight lunch isn't because that, that's part of having a liquor license don't you have to have to serve yeah. food depending where you are and what it is yeah it's often they come with food yeah but all right i think you should, and don't tell her that's what you're doing either you just surprise her with vats of sour cream and sausage and pierogies <sighs> right at midnight boom that was very good advice yeah and I don't want. I've got one when you're ready. Prime so rib. You I want beef. Here. Okay, well I'll dip this one in here. Uh, hey, Rhett. Currently staying at an extended stay hotel in Hamilton for the next five weeks. Is it okay to wear sweatpants to the complimentary breakfast? Hashtag Rhett Mayor 2026. <laughs> Oilers suck. Thanks. That's from Stewart. Five weeks. You got to get shaman to open a home street out in Hamilton. Come on. Yeah, come on. What are you doing the hammer for All five weeks? I've always been against any sort of public sweatpant, but the amount of people I see perusing supermarkets and coffee shops and movies and, and malls, everywhere you go, you get these deadbeat losers in their sweatpants. And then you've got the people that think, because if they get them cuffed on the bottom, now they're dress pants. Like, what oh, kind yeah, of, if, trendy, don't yeah. pretend you're not fooling anyone, you lazy bastard. But if you're in the same hotel for five weeks, I will give you permission yeah. to wear your yeah. PJs down to the breakfast. It's, it's, you haven't it's, left. It's, what it's, it your is private yeah. it's your private abode. As soon as you step outside that door, though, no, you got to take them off. Because now it's not. The, but what if they're joggers? And you're right. It's a sweatpant with just a thicker or a different cuff at the yeah. bottom. It's still a sweatpant. It's bullshit. It's a bunch of bullshit. I'll tell you what, though. We've had this conversation over the years. I feel like I'm starting to lose that battle in my Pandemic, man. I think the pandemic swayed a lot of people. There's a lot of people working from home. It's like, I don't need to get in the shower and put on makeup to do my job. I'm doing it at home, and now I'm just darting out to get a thing or two. I think the pandemic has moved the needle the wrong way for Rhett's liking here on on Sweatpant Nation. The Continental Breakfast. I'm always... Because you, you go on a kid's sporting event. You say, okay, let's go eat. You think we got to leave. We got a game at 9 or 2, whatever it is. I feel like, like you say, that's kind of your, your dwelling for that day. Yeah. You allow them you to go stepped down outside. You haven't met fresh pants. air, right? You're not. So go for it. You want to go ahead? I got one here. Our boy, Wasey Rabbit. Remember Wasey? We've had him on a bunch. Yes, Big sir. fan of the show. Last year was coaching out, I believe, in Alberni Valley. Alberni? The League. Port Alberni. Now with the yeah. Saskatoon Blades retro, wouldn't you know? Huh? Well, that's odd because I put my name for that job but didn't get a call. So, anyway. Well, he's not the head, but, yeah, he's helping out. Do you remember Jerome Buff Engel? Loved you. Boof. He was one of the not assistants buff. there. Boofs. I'm reading. I'm sorry. Boof. And we got a picture of Boof. He's got the, the military outfit on here. But give us a good Boof, Boof story. Buf. No, Buford T. Boomer. It's Buford T. Justice. Oh, Buford okay, man is okay, looking sharp. Yeah. Yes. So there he is with our boy. Wasey in Saskatoon. Buf was one of the toughest bastards you'd ever know. He's coached for the Blades for, well, I was there early 90s, and he was there before I was. 
He taught Tony Twist how to fight, Kelly Chase, all of these guys. He used to go around whacking and hacking. He taught me probably more than any other coach I ever played for. He's an absolute gem, and he's a cornerstone of that franchise. Everybody loves Buf, and he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And he was an undercover cop, and he used to tell stories about going in and beating the piss out of these tough guys that were selling drugs and stuff. He he is a treat to be around. Did he ever get you out of trouble? No, it's yes. Uh, Let me call the guys. Numerous. See what I can. Yeah, yeah. Numerous occasions. (laughs) And through fifty-four games, those blades of yours, Rhett, and of our boy Wacy and Boof, uh, third place. Boof. East division. And these, Buf. Buf, if you say Eastern Buf Conference. again, I'm going to Buford T. Justice. That's why he's called I Buf. hope your goddamn head, head was in it. it. Yes. Buf. Buf and the boys, third in the Eastern Conference in the in the Western League this year. Good on them. Get me awesome. a Diablo sandwich and a Dr. Pepper. I'm in a goddamn hurry. Buf. Buf. Salute to you. Yeah, thanks, Wacey. Can't top that. That's Ask Red for today. Save your own valuable time. Get Hope Street working for you. If you have properties and it's just it's overwhelming you, this is what Hope Street does, and they do it better than anybody else. Locations Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary. Canada's Canada's Property Manager of the Year. The website retro. Hopestreet.ca. Pinder, if you're texting Wacy, you might mention that Buford loved me. But I also drove him effing crazy because I was always the a ones, shit uh, and doing stupid stuff. It's always the ones we love, dude. I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Why do how many you Sunday mornings listen and try? phone is going off. Jesus, uh, right? You could go in the first round if you just worked a little. Hey, we've got. Uh, oh, the I don't. Have I ever here, told right? that story when the assistant coach kicked the door in? When Red Deer, because nope. we were out late and got busted. It's a long story. But anyway, he kicks the door in because we've been busted. And shit is hitting the fan. And he's like, what kind of idiot are you? You're going to get drafted in three months. And they're going to be asking me about you. What am I supposed to let's say? <laughs> and then I'm so uh... arrogant and ignorant. We, we beat Red Deer. And it's always Red Deer, Medicine Hat. Lethbridge home because there was no Calgary. So it's always a Friday, mm-hmm. Saturday, Sunday. And so we beat Red Deer and we're driving to Medicine Hat because we're back to back games, even though we went out and got shit. And so we're almost in Medicine Hat. I'm in the back of the bus and I'm standing up. Big game, boys. Let's have a big W here. We need to get the win. He's looking in the back and he's oh, going to wring your neck, you little shit. <laughs> Three and oh, That's good stuff, man. Three oh, and yeah. oh, three and oh, Sweep road, the road trip. Yeah. Pull the gut, oh, right? You got to bring the boys to yes. the boys knew. Get in the room. The boys knew. John Crooked loved the, that. No, the That's boys right. knew what you had. All right, let's win one here, boys. Can't be pissing around. Shit's really going to hit the fan. Yeah. That's one of those galvanizing <laughs> things that teams get sometimes, right? We've been talking about. Sometimes you need those sorts of things. Well done. Oh, beautiful. What are you looking at, you guys? Now you look like me. You're on your phones. No, we got Betway Bets of the Day coming up here. I just got uh, some intel. Yes. Because we're here at uh, the Griegel, the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Of course, you've got the event center. I mentioned earlier in the program, this weekend, tomorrow night, Headpins, Lee Aaron, and Toronto, all three, triple bill, live in concert just next door. If you go to our Flames Nation social media, at Flames Nation on Twitter, we've got... uh, we got some tickets. Barnburner wants to send you and a friend to the show. Follow Gray Eagle Resort on, on Instagram and on, or on Twitter, whichever one you're on. Tag who you'd be taking to the show, and we will contact you and announce the winner tomorrow. Love it. You'll be off to uh, check out some classic Canadian rock and roll. Triple Bill. Some classic rock. And tickets for the show available at Ticketmaster.ca. I bet there's probably... There's probably some lady in your life who'd be like, I love the head pins. I, the air was so great. I remember in grade 11, I was with the. Anyway, <laughs> ticketmaster.ca. Let's do the Bedway Bets of the Day. Lee. I'm watching Lee Aaron right now, Aaron. kill it in her video. Which one? What you do to my body, do to my body baby? Uh, final question for Askaret. 
Uh, Lee Aaron or Lita Ford? Ooh. Well, I'm watching Lee Aaron. I'll go Lee Aaron. Went to a party last Saturday night. But there's Kiss no wrong answer. Deadly. You know what? Even better, both. <laughs> See, That's it's a trick question. Time? Yes. <laughs> Phew! Warner's in trouble again. <laughs> Get way back to the day. Let's do this and let's get out of here. We got some. We were reading from the same hymn book today. I, I snuck a peek at it. Did you really? Well, we'll, well get there. all right. Not a bad day. I bet way back to the day. Get the app in your phone. Be responsible. Be 19. Be in Ontario. Just be all, be all, be all of it. But do it with Betway. Flames are in Vegas tonight. They're taking on the Golden Knights. I feel like our boy Dubes is due. Anytime goal. Dylan Ooh. Dubé plus 220. And this one hit last night. Yep. And they've not moved this number for Andrew Mangiapane for days. Two and a half shots is the over-under. I'm taking the over. It's plus money today. That line. Plus 105. Over two and a half. What do you have? Five shots? Four shots last night? Let's go, man. Yeah, that going. in the first. Hit in the first yeah, period. Yeah, in the first period. It's unbelievable. Those are my bets of the day. I'm sticking with you, Dino, on the Mangiapane over two and a half shots. I like the plus money there. He's on a roll. That line's rolling. They're feeling good after last night. I'm also kind of digging the power play vibes. They went back to the old units. They scored three times on five power plays. This isn't just the Flames. It's Vegas, too. And to be fair, the Flames penalty kills kind of softened up a bit from top sort of five, six in the league down to about ten. Over one and a half. You need two power play goals combined from both teams. Plus 130. We're dancing on some plus money today. Betway bets of the day. There you go. Betway bets of the day. Seven o'clock game tonight. We have Afterburner. I will be joined by Rob Kerr on Afterburner oh. tonight. Yes. I heard Big week. Craig Conroy texted me and he said, you know what, Retro, that is wonderful news to hear that uh, Rob Kerr is back doing what he should be doing. And you this nailed it, be doing, right? When yeah. he was on the other day, you could just hear it in his voice. It's This is, this is what you should be doing, that, that he has that passion oh. and that, uh, and to do it here, we're pumped. This is awesome. Legend. Yeah. On the radio, there's only so much airtime. The internet gets just... <laughs> yeah. as much as you want for as long as you want. It's, you can just go ahead, try and fill what's, it, Curry. You can't. What's going to be funny is that he will try to fill it, and those yeah. poor oh, producers, yeah. like Tan Man, like, have fun. Like, we're yeah. doing everything we can. We got to get off the air. Never mind him. Yeah. How about bandwidth there. across the city? This guy can go 24 yeah, hours straight. Lights will be flickering. I said, because when we sat there, we kind of started talking about this. Like, well, so what do you, like, what do you see? What do you envision? What time of day? What do you want to do? So, ah, you know, I got some other stuff going on. And, you know, maybe a couple times a week. Got to give him that side. Come on. Really? <laughs> Come on, Rob. Why? What do you, you're, you're Rob Kurt. What are you talking Well, okay. So like three days a week. It's like, okay, we'll do three days we'll a week. So. Just the game is new to Flames Nation. You can check it out on obviously uh, our YouTube channel. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Rob Kerr, the king of afternoon sports radio in this town for so long, he is back and has joined us. And uh, it's three I'm days a week. A, I'm just thinking tonight. You're on with him after the show, and I'm like, I'm thinking for like, boom's going to be looking at the cameras like eyes. It's forty five minutes already. already. Oh yeah. Here we go. Are we done? I'll Rob, try and get a word in. Stay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try and get a word in. It's like, wait till he does his hunger strike yeah. from outside the dome until the new event center's done. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is going to yeah. get good. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. We're happy for Rob and happy for everybody that uh, that Rob is back. Tomorrow on the show, we'll look back at the, obviously, the Golden Knights and Flames from uh, from this evening. 7 Here's o'clock open. start. Here's hoping. Yeah, it's a 7 o'clock start. Are you uh, you going to be with us tomorrow? Or are you, you got kids? What are you doing? I do have kids. I have three, three boys. Yeah. Wow. Uh, they're uh, no, I'm fine tomorrow. What do you mean? All right. Been over a month since back to back wins. It was Johnny, oh. and then uh, that was on the heels of the Tampa win on Saturday. So, what? what are I just meant kids sports. A lot of times, uh, we're almost <laughs> done here, Dean. We're almost done. We got four games on Saturday, and then she's lights really? out. Lights right? What's next? You got lacrosse, yeah. baseball, soccer. What are we doing? Rugby, <sighs> archery. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's a lot of things. We're big into to the martial arts right now. We're really, really tough. Really, hey, Te- yeah. You're teaching them. Deep. Yeah. Deep. 
Yep. They're wrestling. They got geese or G's and jujitsus and Krav Magas and kicking yep. and punching. And it's. Yep. I don't know that the neighbors like it. I don't know that the neighbors like it. Because it it no? yeah. How are they impacted by uh, your kids' sporting activity? Well, you have a shared wall, and the amount of noise that is produced by oh, three I boys see. trying to beat the piss out of each other, oh. that gets heavy. That gets heavy. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Now we're looking uh, looking forward to that game tonight. Net, no better time than the present to get a win, Vegas. God, they'd be feeling so good. God, oh, yeah. Five I'm goals concerned. What are we going to bitch and moan about if they start stringing wins together? Now we got to change our whole dump guys and get rid of guys to, geez, who are we going to bring in here? Like, a lot of playoffs. They could lose You're every game, a, too. A defenseman? What I'm sorry. Let it play out. No one will. No one will remember any of that stuff. Right? Oh, it's only God, on the internet. No yeah. one will try and bury us every single day. But I still we said it at the time. Hey, I'd be happy to be wrong. I'd be happy if they turn things around. Go on a run. That'd be great. Go on a run. Go on a run. Yeah. Go get it. Come on, kids. Lead the way. Hey, they're due. They're due. Huh? <laughs> that too. Thank you, Gray Eagle. Hey. Thank you for your tremendous hospitality. We'll be back soon. We will be back next month and get in on that contest for the uh, the Triple Bell this weekend. Yes, sir. Check out the socials, Flames Nation. Yes, sir. That'll do it for uh, also the for Oilers. The the, also, the Oilers suck. Thanks. Back in studio tomorrow. See you, buddies.